What I'm about to talk to you about today will not be mentioned by the mainstream media. They definitely uh, will not be addressing it in the Biden administration. And I doubt the Department of Justice is doing jack squat. This is the closest to a mainstream media outlet that anyone uh, will get for Jane's, Jane's revenge. Two weeks ago, the Department of Homeland Security issued a terrorism threat advisory bu- bulletin where they warned, and I quote, individuals who advocate both for and against abortion have on public forums encouraged violence. So if you are pro-life, apparently you're just as dangerous as some of these insane abortion enthusiasts that are showing up to the Supreme Court justice's home. Um <laughs> Biden's DOJ has equated the current breakout of violent acts surrounding abortion to both sides of the equation. How many participants of the March of Life have showed up to a Supreme Court justice's home, you know, to to even march, let alone show up to kill? The Family Research Council tallied up uh, over the recent violent attacks and found that there have been over 40 incidents involving pro-life organizations and churches since the leak on the Dobbs decision. And the attacks spanned the entire country. Washington, D.C., Washington State, Georgia, Texas, Maryland, Virginia, Wisconsin, New York, Michigan. It's everywhere. Now imagine if a wave of terror attacks spanning the entire country began breaking out over the cause considered right-wing or conservative. How do you think Biden's DOJ would react? How do you think the media would react to this? We know the answer. But this is a relatively new phenomenon when it comes to terror. Back in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, We knew exactly what the left-wing extremists were all about. We were fighting a war against global communism. And we knew that fear was their weapon, and both the government and the media called them on it. Here's just a short list of some of the left-wing extremist groups. The Weather Underground, the Simonese Liberation Army, the United Freedom Front... FALN, and the May 19th communist organization that included members of the Black Panthers. Even with an active campaign to expose them and catch them and prosecute them, these left-wing terrorists uh, were responsible for an insane amount of criminal acts and bombings and murders. Imagine what would happen if the government and the media of today We're operating back then. Well, we've gotten a little taste. As the Democrats began to turn a blind eye to the left-wing violence in the 1990s, things began to spiral out of control. Have you ever heard of the Animal Liberation Front or the Earth Liberation Front? Most haven't, but between 1996 and 2002, they were responsible for 600 criminal acts that caused over $42 million in damages. But those guys are rookies. The Black Lives Matter and Antifa violence in 2020 alone resulted in multiple deaths and one to two billion dollars in damage. We went from a nation of laws and law enforcement to a nation of, no, I'm reimagining this violence is mostly peaceful. It's mostly peaceful firebombs, murders and chaos. The problem is, is the Democratic Party just stopped caring. They realized that fear is a very powerful weapon. And in 2001, Bill Clinton pardoned Patty Hearst, who helped one radical Marxist group commit armed robberies. Then he pardoned Weather Underground members Susan Rosenberg and Linda Evans. Rosenberg was convicted of possessing 740 pounds of dynamite, and Evans was convicted for helping uh, to bomb the U.S. Capitol. You've seen the pictures recently. It was much, 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 much worse than anything that happened on January 6th. So in 2017, Obama then commuted the sentence of Oscar Lopez uh, Rivera. He helped lead the Marxist group FALN. That group from 1974 to 1983... As he was leader, they were responsible for more than 130 bombings, four deaths, and dozens wounded. Are you noticing a pattern here? 
the people who are getting released by our Democratic presidents are all terrorists. This is the modern American left. They pardon or commute the sentences for Marxist terrorists. But a nationwide campaign to attack churches and pro-life organization, that goes on now in silence. Why? Well, I think it's consistent. They've refused to bat an eye when the son of two weatherground uh, underground uh, members, uh, Chesse, uh, uh, how do you say his last name, Budin? Yeah, Chesse Budin, who runs the district, who runs for district attorney in San Francisco. That is, that is the son. Then they try and run uh, PR as he's blamed for massive crime waves that ultimately ended in his recall. The Democratic Party. They see fear as a weapon. Maxine Waters told her supporters to follow the GOP politicians everywhere they go. It's why Keith Ellison tweeted a photo photo of himself holding a copy of the Antifa handbook. It's why Jen Psaki would never say the Biden administration condemned the abortion protests outside of Kavanaugh's home. They want you to be afraid. They want you to be subdued. They want you to be broken. Over 40 attacks on pro-life organizations and churches. And it appears that the Justice Department is ignoring it. Where are they? Let me show you again a poster from the Night of Rage. This is a poster that is on the streets of the District of Columbia today as we wait for more results from the Supreme Court. Posters everywhere in New York. D.C. call to action. Night of Rage. The night SCOTUS overturns Roe versus Wade hit the streets. You said you'd riot to our oppressors. If abortions aren't safe, neither are you. Jane's revenge. Where's the DOJ on this? In May, a pro-life organization, Madison, Wisconsin, attacked with a Molotov cocktail. Also vandalized with the words, if abortions aren't safe, then neither are you. Hmm. Sound familiar? Now, It wasn't immediately known who was responsible, but an anonymous intermediary reached out to investigate uh, journalist Robert Evans claiming responsibility. I'm sorry, they reached out to investigative reporter Robert Evans claiming responsibility. Um, It was titled the first communique, and that first communique was found on the dark web. You know where nobody I know lives? The group calls themselves Jane's Revenge. That comes from a 1970s era group that performed illegal abortions called the Jane's Collective. Now listen to some of their own words from the first communique. Quote, this is not a declaration of war. War has been upon us for decades. This was only a warning. As you continue to bomb clinics and assassinate doctors with impunity, so too shall we adopt increasing extreme tactics to maintain freedom over our own bodies. We are forced to adopt the minimum military requirement for a political struggle. Again, this was only a warning. Next time, the infrastructure of the enslavers will not survive. Medical imperialism will not face a passive enemy. Wisconsin is the first flashpoint, but we are all over the U.S. and we will issue no further warnings, and we will not stop. We will not back down, nor will we hesitate to strike. We are not one group, but many. We are in your city. We are in every city. Jane's Revenge. Is that not terror? Is that not the very definition of a terrorist group? This warning came out May 8th. On May 30th, Jane's Revenge issued another communique announcing a night of rage, which they are holding secret for the near term and the near future. We believe, because of the posters that have just been put out, that that is for the night of broken glass, if you will, the riot, the night that uh, Roe versus Wade may be overturned. Now, imagine what would happen if the Weather Underground or May 19th Communist Organization bombed a government building, then announced a night of rage in the near future. 
if they were stalking our Supreme Court justices. The FBI, the DOJ, and every other alphabet agency would have been all hands on deck in all of government response to find them and to take them down. Again, where's the Department of Justice? Where was Joe Biden's address to let the public know that they condemned this group and they're actively investigating? The warnings have gone unanswered. And one week later, a pro-life facility operated by Compass Care in Buffalo was the next to be firebombed. One week later, Jane's Revenge took credit for the attack. They were also listed, uh, listing other attacks that they were involved with. Quote, you may have seen us in Madison, Wisconsin, Fort Collins, Colorado, Risertown, Massachusetts, Olympia, Washington, Des Moines, Iowa, Linwood, Washington, Washington, D.C., Asheville, Buffalo, Hollywood, Florida, Vancouver, Washington, Frederick, Maryland, Denton, Texas, Gresham, Oregon, Eugene, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, among, and among many others. And we work in countless locations invisibly. Quoting, your 30 days expired yesterday. We offered an honorable way out. You could have walked away. But now the leash is off, and we will make it as hard as possible for you to campaign and continue your campaign of aggression, oppression. We have demonstrated in the past month how easy and fun it is to attack. From here forward, any anti-choice group who closes their doors and stops operating will no longer be a target. But until you do, it is open season, and we know where your operations are. Again, where is the Department of Justice? They've already claimed responsibility for at least 17 attacks. There are more than 2,800 pregnancy clinics in the country. How, how, how far does this have to go before Biden does his job? We've been looking into this organization, trying to find its funding. It appears their structure is specifically designed to be vague. It's also suspiciously exactly the way Antifa operates. We spoke to some pro-life organizations that voiced suspicion that Jane's Revenge could, in fact, be members of Antifa. We're still looking into it. But their organization, as well as their graffiti, is very telling. Some of the buildings that they have attacked have been tagged with the anarchist A, common with Antifa. They also spray-painted the numbers 1312, which stands for A-C-A-B, a cab, all cops are bastards. Does that sound like a pro abortion person talking to you? For years, we have asked the government to do something about Antifa. President Trump tried to label them as domestic terrorists, but it never went through. That inaction contributed to the summer of rage in 2020, and their further inaction has now put pro-life organizations even at greater risk. And at this point, the only way to get Biden's DOJ to take notice is if you're a parent that doesn't like CRT or sexually explicit material in your kids' schools, or if you happen to be on Washington, D.C.'s mall, on January 6th, and that's about it. If a leftist terrorist group violently attacks a pro-life organization, declares more attacks in the future, no big deal. If you just follow the trends from the Democrats over the past few decades, this is not surprising, nor will it be surprising what happens when the left unleashes war on our streets. For fear is their weapon. And congratulations, who everybody wanted to return to normalcy with Joe Biden. Welcome to Joe Biden's America. Stay.